with us via the Zoom uh, ping, actually it is, uh, in uh, Tel Aviv, uh, Maron Rappaport. He is the editor of uh, Local Call, also a, uh, a writer for 972 uh, Magazine. Um, there's a, there's a bunch of stuff that I wanted to, to talk to you about Marone and, and, and we'll get to, uh, who are, uh, uh, in a moment, the, um, Israeli government has taken in this latest election, a, um, maybe the best way to phrase it is a far less disputable, uh, right wing turn, um, in, uh, in, in its latest incarnation. Uh, many of us, I think, sort of feel like they have been right wing for for quite some time. But you you wrote a piece uh, about how it is becoming increasingly difficult for Western countries to maintain the fiction that Israel is uh, the lone democracy in the Middle East. Uh, many people perceive their treatment of uh, of Palestinians as already having sort of like disqualified that uh, that that imprimatur. But the latest round uh, in, involving judicial review, uh, 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 judicial review, essentially a reform, as they're calling it, has really um, really seems to be nails in the coffin. Let's just start with tell us what is in the offing. What does the Netanyahu government want to do in terms of uh changing the relationship between the Knesset and, um, and, and the judicial system in Israel. Uh, good evening, good morning. Um, uh, well, I think uh, basically what they want to do is to, uh, uh, is to change the ba- changing the balance is, is, a, a, is an understatement. They just want the Knesset that in Israel is completely governed by the government itself, uh, giving the Knesset almost supreme power over the court, meaning that the court will not have any uh, way in disputing or disqualifying or any law passed by the Knesset. Uh, and as I said, the coalition, the ruling coalition, is really uh, uh, is without a real opposition in the Knesset. That means that the government has almost will have almost illimited power uh, in Israel, and this, of course, is very uh, f- uh, frightening. Now, for uh, we will talk later maybe about Hawara and what's going on in the West Bank. But I think for the um, uh, Israeli public, the Jewish Israeli public, what it is, what is uh, afraid of is really there is here a feeling that its own way of life is being threatened in the sense that uh, uh, secular uh, 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 Jews uh, feel that they will not have a space. Liberal Jews feel that they will not have a space. LTB rights uh, people feel that their rights will be uh, threatened. So because this government is really a coalition of very uh, diverse forces, uh, uh, but, uh, you know, there are very fundamentalist, religious fundamentalists, there are very right-wing nationalist racist uh, uh, forces. Uh, so together, this mixture, there, there are very anti-liberal forces. This mixture together makes many, many Israelis much more than anyone could have expected go to the streets. Today we have seen quite violent clashes in Tel Aviv. Uh, We have for the eighth week, uh, consecutive week, we've seen hundreds of thousands every weekend going to the streets. Uh, It's really huge. And uh, and what's happening, and that is even before we're talking what happened in the West Bank, what is happening is I think even in the outside world, when this balance is being changed. 
when the Supreme Court, which had quite a large legitimacy abroad, seen as a bastion of democracy, bastion of, of you know, the real proof, the living proof that Israel is a democracy. If this uh, 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 Supreme Court is being threatened, then I think uh, many uh, countries, and we have seen that uh, uh, in Netanyahu's visit to, to France, we were meeting with Macron, with President Macron, uh, by President Biden's statement, uh, uh, Secretary of State Blinken's statement. So we have seen really uh, uh, um, many outside forces uh, feel that Israel will become a kind of, of, of Poland or Hungary. In fact, it's much worse, but maybe we will go to that later. Yes. Okay. And 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 we should say just for 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 people who do, who aren't aware of of um, uh, of the the structure of Israeli politics, the Knesset. If I'm and correct me if I'm wrong, 120 members of the Knesset. Um, yes. The the law says 61 can overrule any Supreme Court uh, ruling, which means. You can't like it's it's it is basically there's no that's it. I mean, 61, the government has 61 uh, members of, of the Knesset by definition. It's not like the United States where you could have theoretically a Republican majority and a, um, you know, a, uh, a, a a Democratic president. Uh, it doesn't work like that in, in, in Israel. It's a parliamentary system. Uh, so effectively, the the Supreme Court has no check or balance on. Now, will you uh, tell us, just give us an example of how the Supreme Court has both in terms of, and maybe less so, I think, in, in, in the context of, of Palestinians, but to some degree, um, but in terms of Israeli society, because I don't think that people are quite aware, too, that there is an increasing number, like you say, uh, this government is reflective of both fundamentalist uh, uh, Jews and sort of ethno-nationalists. Um, and, um, you know, many of them, frankly, who come from, who, who were, uh, uh, you know, re fairly recent uh, Russian emigres, uh, and they're coming from, you know, an authoritarian state. Their, uh, their perspective on, on democracy, you know, this is not something that you just pick up, uh, you know, uh, uh, the next day necessarily. Um, there is uh the israel has always had this balance of very secular jews um and they're also being extremely religious fundamentalist uh jews there has always been some tension there um will you just give us a sense of like what the supreme court has in the past done in terms of like protecting rights of israelis and and theoretically uh palestinians so that people can understand the implications of this Yes, first of all, it's not only uh, that uh, uh, with a 61 majority, according to the proposed uh, law, uh, uh, the government can do, could do anything. Uh, ever. Uh, Israel does not have a constitution. There's no constitution in Israel, so nothing is guaranteed, nothing is protected, no right whatsoever, including the right to vote. Is not guaranteed in, 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 in any law. Theoretically, the new government, if this uh, uh, reform will pass, they could uh, disfranchise people from their right to vote, and there will be no one that will help them. Now, the, the many ex the the, uh, uh, the examples are, are you know are concerned. Um, Sometimes secular, uh, the rights of secular Jews against uh, against uh, all kind of religious law. Uh, there was some kind of ruling uh, uh, concerning uh, uh, immigrants, uh, African immigrants uh, to Israel, uh, uh, asylum seekers, uh, giving them their rights. There were also in the West Bank. Yes, it's true that. Uh, you know, uh, grosso modo, uh, uh, the, the Supreme Court did not really interfere. 
but it did slow down many things like the separation wall, like sometimes house demolition, like, like deportation. Uh, is, Israel used to deport uh, Palestinian uh, activists in the 80s and 90s, and then it stopped also due to judicial intervention. So there are many uh, 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 examples here, and Israel was really founded uh, as, uh, uh, as a secular uh, uh, democracy. Uh, I would even say more. The very fact of, of Zionism, what does it mean? It means that people, at least the way they saw it, came out of their will to, to the land of Israel, the Jews, of course, I'm talking about. And therefore, the system had to give them this feeling uh, of, of, of that they are giving them the rights, that it is a model society. That was very important for in the history of Zionism. From the very beginning, the first election to Jewish institution in uh, Israel, then Palestine, under uh, the British mandate, was in 1920. 1920 is the first, are the first elections for a constituency of the Jews in uh, uh, Palestine. Uh, so the tradition, the, 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 the democratic tradition, goes way back even before uh, 48, even the, before the establishment of the State of Israel. So here we are talking about a real uh, deep tradition uh, maybe not 100%, you know, not no, far away from 100% because the way to treat Palestinians, whether inside the Green Line that are citizens of Israel and certainly those in the West Bank and East Jerusalem and Gaza under occupation. But yes, to Israeli, Jewish Israeli citizens were given a feeling that the rights are protected by this uh, very delicate system. And now, uh, with the new uh, uh, law, um, the feeling is that they could do anything. And the fact that there are these fundamentalists in government makes many Israelis, Jewish Israelis, still I, I, uh, uh, fear that if there will be nothing that will protect them, even when they are asked, the, the leaders of this reform asked, okay, what guarantees can you give us? Can you give us guarantees that the right to vote will be maintained, that we will have an election every four years? They say, well, it's up to the Knesset to decide. Right. So even that is not guaranteed. So yes, uh, uh, there's a really big concern. And interestingly enough, it uh, drew huge crowds and very and, and also outside uh, leaders and outside the outside world also is looking with apprehension of what's going on. There, there's a. Um... There's an interesting dynamic here because you you wrote a piece about how you know for instance Macron, um, and 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 I think he was you know as an example, uh, is now you know sort of concerned about this notion of democracy and on some level, there's also like you know an awareness that this has been a fig leaf uh, because of the way that Palestinians have been treated both, uh, as you say, uh, on one side of the green line as citizens and the other side, uh, as in, within an occupied territory. Um, you, this, and, and I, and I would argue that dynamic is, is in many ways, uh, a, a function of racism. Um, you know, in, in the same way in this country, you know, at one point we could be talking about having a democracy, although, uh, black people are not allowed to to go into a hotel or, uh, you know, uh, in in the last century uh, in this country and, 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 and before. But you also wrote a piece a couple of months ago, I think even before maybe the, the this reform uh, started. And and I and I wonder your perspective on this now, 
that the liberal left within Israel, which has been, uh, at least in terms of like the Jewish liberal left in Israel, has been increasingly become a minority, um, is in fact a majority if they take a more expansive view as to what the fight is within that country. Can you um, uh, talk about that idea and, and expand on it, particularly in light of, of this, now that they, they've been drawn in by this sort of almost like um, non-racialized, if you will, uh, uh, sort of a front on their, uh, on, 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 on the rights within Israel? Yes, this is a notion that I think uh, still uh, very few Israeli Jews uh, understand, but I think they should understand. Uh, what I'm referring to is this right-wing government is uh, uh, has declared in its principles that uh, uh, only the Jewish people have a right for self-determination in the historic land of uh, Eretz Israel, between the river and the sea, between the Jordan River and the sea. So they, the right-wing, is viewing the whole of the territory between the river and the sea as one territory under Israeli rule and with Jewish supremacy all over the land. Now, if you say, okay, let's look at this land. In this land, there are 15 million people, half of them Palestinian, almost even a little more, 50.4 or something like this. 50.4% uh, uh, are Palestinian and, and a little less than 50% are, are Jews. So there is a Palestinian majority. And if you take the, the liberal uh, uh, Jews in Israel and add them to the Palestinian, you have a clear majority between the river and the sea that oppose these right-wing racist uh, policies. Now, it's a mentality that still most Israelis, Israeli Jews, still don't see, but uh, because they don't see themselves as, you know, related to the Palestinian over the Green Line, uh, uh, in, in West Bank and Gaza and and and, and East Jerusalem. But I think it's a right way to think about it. We have to think about it, and if we will think. In this way, we, I'm talking about the liberal left, then we will understand that we are not a minority. We are a majority. And we can use this majority. Uh, um, we have to understand that the right wing, Smotrich, and he said yet today, maybe we will go to Hawara. He said in his words today, uh, uh, after there was this uh, attack, this pogrom on Hawara by uh, hundreds of uh, settlers, uh, he uh, um, gave a like to someone who, who, uh, who uh, called for the destruction of this uh, village, 7,000 uh, people, Palestinian living there. And today he was asked about why did he gave this like and now he said today, he said, I think Hawara must be destroyed. And we should say you're All talking about Bezal, Bezal Smotrich? Is that, is that he's, Bezal he's, Smotrich, he's the, the finance minister. He is, uh, sits in the uh, cabinet in the, uh, uh, and he also is a minister in the Ministry of Defense, he is now responsible for all the civil side of the occupation in the West Bank. So he's saying, I think this should be the policy of the government to destroy this village, a village of 7,000 Palestinians. So yes, the, those people in government, like Bezalel Smotrich, like uh, Itamar Bengvir, he was a Kahanist, he was a member of the uh, uh, Kahana Chai movement, and, uh, and now is a minister for, for responsible for the police. 
the Kahanist, we should just say, are uh, Mayer Kahan was a sort of a uh, a, a radical f- a fundamentalist uh, nationalist who I think I mean he was um, he was racist. He was he racist. was banned from the Israeli Knesset. He was the only one who was banned from the Israeli Knesset because he was considered ras- racist by the uh, Supreme Court. So they want to really uh, 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 to have a decisive victory that's how they say it, decisive victory over the palestinian and uh, 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 lead them either to surrender and accept apartheid regime living in uh, in, uh, uh, in for inferior rights or leave meaning a new nakba from 48. That is their policy. And the people who went to Hawara uh, uh, on Sunday are their people. I don't know, I cannot prove, of course, any direct connection, but th- th- they come from the same, you know, way of thinking. Yeah. So, yes, uh, so they want the Palestinian out out not they don't want better rights they don't want they want them out so uh, uh i think uh uh definitely not a democracy uh what's what's what, what i have noticed over the years is that the right wing in israel and 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 even like not even the far right <laughs> like you know just the uh, netanyahu who i think in in a vacuum i considered to be far right but within the context of israel is you know almost considered uh, the, the the center at this point um they uh, and and i remember a quote uh, to this effect um they they will make um they will make common cause with really right wing fascists in europe um they will make common cause with christian zionists in this country um, and I, there was a quote that, uh, was from, from years ago, uh, and I don't know if it was from a, uh, an Israeli general or whatnot, but somebody had said to him, like, you realize these Christian Zionists, they want you to burn in hell. Like, I mean, the, the, their, their plan for Israel does not include you doing anything other than, and he said, you know, I'll worry about that when that time comes. The, uh, the willingness of the right in that country. And I think there's, you know, uh, there's, there's really not necessarily any inherent conflicts per se between the fundamentalist right and the ethno nationalist racist right. Um, there are some, but it, but they seem to be ra- rather small, but you would think that like, maybe there's even more like with, with Christian Zionists or with, you know, uh, fascist anti-Semites in Europe, they're willing to make that common cause to further their project. Yet they're like, what's it going to take for the the Israeli liberal left um, to understand that they, you know, the Palestinians have been the canary in the coal mines um, and that they are uh, the, you know, like they, their fates are, are intertwined in many respects. Unfortunately, unfortunately, I think uh, most Israelis, most of those hundreds of thousands who go to the streets every week, and this is very, very impressing. I must say, I, I right. I, I mean, really we should be we should be clear. That's like six million Americans going out yes. and marching every weekend in yes. this country. Six, yes. seven, yes. eight million. I mean, that would be huge. It's huge. It's really huge, and they they are persistent, and uh, they are ready to to fight. They are ready to to confront the police. And this is very impressive, but I'm unfortunately I think most is well, most of those people going there uh, do not really see the clear connection. It's not natural from them. But I uh, maybe I'm a, a natural optimist. I think that this is a two-stage issue. That first of all, these. And it's not even uh, left, it's really center people that are going there. Really center, even center right sometimes, you know, liberal right. Uh, uh, 
uh, are going there because they see the danger. I think they one now the fight is really to 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 uh, to, to prevent this government from achieving this very dangerous goals that it set to itself. And the fight is the, in the name of democracy. That's what the protesters are, are chanting. They say, they chant the, the, main, the most popular slogan is democracy or rebellion. So they fight for democracy. Yes, it's not the way I see democracy. I see democracy as I cannot see democracy living with occupation. I cannot see democracy living with discrimination against Palestinians inside Israel. But yes, once the issue is democracy, and once this issue will win over the right wing and this really frightful coalition of fundamentalist, ethno nationalist, uh, racist, and this coalition will be defeated, if it will be defeated, I think it will be a new start for many Israelis to start saying, okay, now we have to think how to, 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 uh, to strengthen our democracy, to think what does it mean, democracy, to think over the real deep meaning of this word, if you fight for it, then Afterwards, you have to think, okay, what we have fought for. We have fought for democracy, so let's see if we have democracy. And I think inevitably, they will see the, 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 the connection to what's happening in the West Bank. And what happened now, in this, this week, in, in Hawara, is a good example where the same people, yeah. that are pushing for this uh, re judic judicial reform are the people who went and attacked civilian in Hawara. And people are saying, okay, even more uh, 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 moderate uh, uh, Jews, not very liberal left people, even centrists, I see, well, they are, they want uh, uh, to impose the way in Hawara and in Tel Aviv. It's the same thing. And I think once there is this reckoning and once, you know, this re very dangerous reform will be defeated, I hope so. It's not evident, it's far from evident, but it's a real fight. If it will be defeated, then I think there will be room for new thinking about what does it mean to be a democracy. It's yeah. like a huge, you know, lesson in, in, in a political science, like, like Israelis are, are going to, a, 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 you know, a, a very uh, sophisticated and very uh, uh, short term uh, uh, lesson in political science and understanding the basic meanings of democracy, majority rule, uh, what does, does it mean, uh, the, the, the rule of the majority, what does it mean, the, 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 the dictatorship of the mi majority, what, the, what are minority rights, all these issues are on the agenda now. Uh, yeah, I hope it works out that way. I mean, I couldn't help but think, you know, the, the slogan democracy or rebellion could for all intents and purposes be democracy or intifada right i mean on some level it's the there is it obviously it's not a one-to-one -one translation and the implication of intifada for a lot of those you know sort of centrist um even center right uh maybe even center uh you know liberal um um the uh, jewish israelis uh, may mean something different to them. But from the ears of like an American who sees this from afar, um, it, 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 the, the, there's such an obvious sort of parallel dynamic here. It's just that, you know, it starts with the most marginalized and then it just works its way. Uh, those same people have that same will to power. Well, um, Marone Rappaport, I'd love to, um, to have another conversation with you as this develops more. 
and particularly, you know, with the, the, my sincerest uh, hopes that that, 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 you know, light goes off in the head of, uh, of those Israelis there who now realize that their fate has always been bound with the democratic, uh, big D, uh, small D, I should say, democratic principles, uh, that Israel is either following or not following. Um, and, uh, you know, I will be happy to talk again, but I, I must say it is the most dramatic days that internally, I'm not talking about the second, first intifada, second intifada, or wars, or the 67 wars, or the uh, 73 war. I'm talking about internally. It is the most dramatic days. These are the most dramatic days Israeli society have known, I think, since 48. Since 48, it has never experienced such uh, a clash of civilization, of culture, of political cultures than we are seeing today. Fascinating. Um, uh, Marone Rappaport, uh, we'll put what a link to your uh, 972 uh, uh, pieces and uh, local call. Really appreciate your time today. Thank you.